In 74 there was a very severe storm that resulted in major erosion of this uh, Bait Bay embayment and just to the north of where we are here uh, the waves actually washed through the dunes uh, and into the back and there was some concern that that might result even in a breakthrough into the uh, bay, which seems almost impossible to think of today with all the rebuilding that's been done. But uh, in those days, it was very, very low. As a result of the 1974 storms, the state government introduced the Beach Improvement Program to help recover the beaches of the Sydney region and one of the first areas we started on was in Cronulla and uh, it was a combined effort between Public Works who I worked for, I was in charge of the uh, Beach Improvement Program and the Soil Conservation Service. So we effectively had a sink here for sand and that was causing the long-term recession of the beach. In fact we completely reversed that trend and today we're seeing virtually a zero movement in the beach. A lot of people don't realise uh, the sensitive nature of dunes and the uh, amount of maintenance actually required to keep them in a healthy state in such urbanised areas with high use. Um, that's what makes the uh, Soil Conservation Service's work so important down here, um, not only for beach amenity and beach users, but also to protect the ever-growing infrastructure on the Kernel Peninsula. And it takes years and sometimes even decades to recover these if they're uh, really badly damaged. And another thing that people don't realise is that we've actually been in a 30 to 40 year low in both storm intensity and activity. A lot of land managers are really complacent um, in what they think they can build and where they can build it. And you know, the, the pictures that we see from the 70s, they will happen again. Um, it's just a matter of time. So the current stage of the project is, uh, happy to say, we've, we've stabilised this dune system with the revegetation works we've committed here since 1974. And now we're looking to promote better public access uh, with the urbanisation and industrial development of the area as it continues to grow and uh, promote a better ecological diversity in this parkland. Uh, whilst suppressing the weed infestations that were previously here. So we use different methods of weed management from high volume spraying to backpacking to scrape and paste and uh, hand weeding. One of the techniques we use, out, especially out in the foredune, is a technique called brush matting whereby we place uh, native vegetation off, off cuts when we're maintaining the track entranceways and we use it to, as I guess a wind fence to catch sand particles where blowouts have occurred along the beachfront. The biggest challenge along with urbanisation out in this area is obviously environmental. Uh, it's quite a dynamic environment to be in. We have wind shifts, we have sand movement, any kind of small disturbance can lead to a big disturbance very quickly. Uh, so we need to be on top of our game and manage those very efficiently on ground. So one of the important things we need to stay on top of out here is maintenance. If we let that go, all our hard work will be quickly undone based on the dynamic nature of this sand dune system. So now that we've stabilised the dunes, we're looking at the bigger picture, what's beyond. With the growing urbanisation of the area, we're, we're looking at how we can create that or continue that balance between the environment here and this parkland, the growing ecology and, and its diversity, and then bringing it back together for a public use space. Council is responsible for managing this parcel of land and we work in conjunction with the state government and have a 50-50 arrangement in terms of funding. We have input in what works, what works happen on the site. It's really important that we sustain this beautiful natural asset for the, for the residents and the community and the, and the environment.